Ah, oh, welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We've been having some fun with wire antennas on this channel recently, and somebody put a comment out uh, the other day wanting to know what ideas I could come up with for an attic, a loft antenna for CB. And this could be exactly the same for 10 meter band as well. And by the way, I tried a couple of these things, so we'll we'll have some fun with it. So let's focus on CB in the 11 meter band because it can be jolly good fun and lots of activity sometimes on 11 meters. But everything I say is re relative also to maybe the 12 meter band and also the 10 meter band. So I'll get my little calculator out here because we can explain a couple of things with some maths as well, which is quite interesting. The 11 meter band, and let's just take an arbitrary average number of 27 point, oh, I don't know, three, five megahertz. Now we can find out the wavelength of that just by dividing 300 divided by 27.35. So the wavelength, one of the reasons they call this the 11 meter band is that the wavelength of that is 10.968 meters long. Why 300 divided by 27? because actually 27 megahertz is in millions and 300 million meters per second. And if you actually work out, what you'll find is the wavelength really is nearly 11 meters long. 10.968, we'll round that up to 10.97, let's say, okay? Now, the a bit of regular old-fashioned insulated wire will have something called an end effect. So if we took, let's say, a basic quarter wave vertical for the 11 meter band, you'll find that a quarter, we could, if we have, and by the way, I'll show you a video, I'll put it in the description where I made a three-legged vertical for 11 meter band, well, 10 meter band actually. And this element needs to be a quarter of a wavelength. And if we do that, we'll get a great match, as it happens, to 50 ohms, all right? Now, I do appreciate that in the CB world, some people get a little bit paranoid about SWR. Don't be, okay? Just, just if it's under 1.5 to one, just don't be worried about it. It's not gonna do any, any, any difference. So we could do that, couldn't we? Let's get it on the screen. 10.9 four divided by four to so a quarter wave is going to be 2.735. But I was explaining about end effects and uh, the dielectric of a piece of plastic. In the main, what we will discover is, in the main, is we'll discover that it's that quarter wavelength there is about, give or take, it's going to be about 93% of what we thought it is because the electrons and the end effects and a few other things just don't go fast enough, all right? So 93% of 27 of that number there on my screen, okay? So we'll multiply that by 0 0.93, 0 0.93. So you will find if you cut this, it's exactly 2.54 meters right and we can convert that very quickly to old money if in the usa convert 2.54 meters to feet and inches there's your answer 8.33 8.33 recurring feet just over eight feet all right uh eight feet three and a half inches something like that We'll find you get a you get a perfect match. Okay, you just will. Okay, so now we need to head into our attic. All right. So I don't know what sort of house you got, what sort of attic you got available to you, but part of my attic is a bit like this. All right. It might be flat and whatever else. All right. So what can you do in there? Because two point five four sometimes, if you've got a small loft, is a little bit difficult. Well, it's a really, really cool formula is you could shorten that, right? You could shorten that 2.54 meters quite a lot. How? Well, we can linear load the top of it. So in other words, what we can do is we can come up and come back down again. We've still got our ground plane to, to, to do, and we'll do that in a minute, all right? 
How much? If you just give me a moment, I'll just work that out for you. I've done some calculations. What you could do if you, you if you didn't have the height, all right, you could go up two meters there and you could turn around, bring the wire straight back down to near the bottom. All right. And if you've got a little SWR meter, it'll tell you whether you're whether it is working or an analyzer, whether it's you're on 26, you've overshot, you've gone down too far or, it, or you're too high. It's up in the 10 meter band. By the way, one of the ways you can check that is if you've got, let's say, a 40 channel radio, you can plot it on a little spreadsheet all the way from channel one to channel 40. And you can see if your SWR is rising, so it's going from two to one. 2.2, 2.4, 3, and so on. You you know that, and you're started measuring there, you know that somewhere down here, it's going to be almost, you know, a perfect match. So you just know, oh, well, if my antenna is too long, all right, you will find that the frequency that it's resonant on is too low, all right, because low and long is the same. That's all you need to know. So, but anyway, roughly, if you went up uh, two meters and came back 1.5, you will find you'll be pretty close to 27.35. Because I've done some maths. Do I need to tell you about that? Basically, all I've done, by the way, if you wanted to do that calculation yourself, is I thought, well, instead of going up 2.54, I'll go up two, and I can't just come back 0.54, I've got to come back approximately three times 54, which is one and a half. So you can go up two, come back one and a half, whoops, one and a half, and that'll be roughly, you'll still be on the same frequency. So a vertical. However, the center of the coax, if you remember, has to go up the spout. What are we now gonna do with the braid? Okay, now ideally, and I'll, I'll put a link to a description in uh, uh, down below. Ideally, these wanna be at an angle. Only, not for anything other than getting a good match to your coax, all right? So if you can raise the feed point, you could do this system here, and then raise the feed point, you know, up to chest height, whatever, and then get the same 2.54 legs, and by the way, you only need two of them, all right? You only need two legs, 180 degrees apart. At a slight angle, you'll just get a better SWR match. That's what, your RF will still go out, all right? but you'll just get a better match to RF. So we got our vertical, that's easy. What else could we do? So because we've got this wavelength at nearly 11 meters, just under, we agreed it was 10.97, 10.97. Then there's a couple of other things we could do. You could just put a dipole. And if you remember the length of that was we agreed around and about 254, 2.54 meters. So we take our loft again, all right, our little house thing. Um, we could do 2.54 one way, 2.54 the other way, put the coax in the middle, okay, and then we can have these two dipole legs. One's going that way, and the other is going this way, 2.54. By the way, it doesn't matter if that's 2.56 and that's uh, 2.52. You know, just slightly off center, it won't even matter. Again, if you look down, plan view on top of the house now, and you haven't quite got the room, then you can go along, there's the dipole. And you can go, oh, uh, I haven't got enough room there. You can go that way and you can go that way and it wouldn't make any difference, all right? The main difference between the vertical and the dipole is that the vertical, your signal is going out. You know, if you wanted to speak to your mate a couple of miles away down the road, and this is an attic antenna, you'd probably be better off if he's got a vertical with another with a vertical, because they're both in the same plane, all right? It's called, called polarisation. Um, if he's got like a Yagi or maybe some sort of dipole, flat dipole like this here, you'll be better off with a dipole if you wanted to talk to him. Skip, all right, or propagation, as we say in amateur radio terms, has an angle, all right? So it doesn't matter if your signal isn't going out completely straight, all right, in terms of CB world, all right, in the 10 meter band, 
quite often you'll find signals are quite happy at, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 degrees off the horizon. So you're quite happy going up, all right? You'll easily get due to um, uh, Giuseppe in Naples, all right, <laughs> with a loft dipole, all right? The only other thing you could do is you can take about 11 metres of wire, all right, go all the way around the inside of the loft here, and connect your coax to it with a four to one ballon, which you can buy. Now, you could, this is to get the match back to 50 ohms, all right? I'm not gonna tell you about using a stub, a piece of 75 ohm coax to do the matching, because you could do as well, all right? You can get the impedance down a little bit from it's probably somewhere between 150 and 200 ohms, for a loop with a four to one ballon brings it down to, you know, 40, 50, 60 ohms for your CB rig. But that would also, the advantage of this little loop, it would sound nice, all right? You can all, you can hear lots of other bands nicely. You can do some shortwave listening if you've got a different receiver, that sort of thing. And by the way, if you live in an apartment, you can do the same sort of thing. This little loop, by the way, you could go, you could, very thin wire, right? you don't need it thick literally blue tack it into the corners, all right? And you do the same. Or you could build a little vertical, um, you know, literally by the window. Add a push, by the way, before we finish off with this vertical here. If you can't get these at an angle, it will still work, okay, by putting them flat. Again, you only need two, but you can put them flat. You'll see your SWR's a bit high, but I promise you, stop worrying about your SWR. The rig itself has got a protection circuit in it, okay? So you can't blow it up, all right? Particularly if you're using like a ham radio gear, just use the tuner button, it won't matter. People have told me in the comments that they've done tests, the difference between 1.5 and one to one SWR, and it makes a hell of a difference. The thing is with CB, there's only one thing to worry about normally, which is SWR, so everybody worries about it, all right? In the ham radio world, we don't give a shit about it, okay? And we still get everywhere, right? <laughs> I mean, I run two to one SWR sometimes. I've run three to one SWR. You know, I can't, I can't hear the difference. All right? It's not a lot. Twenty to one SWR. That's a different case. All right, where it's off the scale, right? where you're driving an antenna completely incorrectly, and you, all your loss, you're heating up the coax. Basically, that's what you're doing. But one point five, one point six, one point seven to one. Stop worrying about it. Okay, just get on with it and enjoy. It's a hobby. All right, it's a good laugh, isn't it? Mucking around with radios. So, hopefully that's just given you a little bit of inspiration. Have a great day. I'll give you another video here, and then uh, you can have some fun. All right? I'll see you next time. Bye for now.